We have traveled all over Kenya to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the help they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and build profitable businesses. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice, while also learn from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they shape up their shambas. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Hello and welcome to Shamba Shape Up. This week we are seeing how you can add value to your farm produce by doing more after harvest. I think it's safe, Carol, to say that it's going to be a very fruity episode. That's right. In this episode, we are focusing on mangoes and oranges. Tony, did you know that even tomatoes are fruits? Really? Oh, yes. Maybe three tomatoes. Okay, if you don't believe me, let's find our farmer and let's see what he has to say. Uh, let us find out more. Let's go. This week we are in Moranga County. And we are visiting Patrick Itheka. Patrick has eight acres and is an expert mango farmer. Not only that, he's chairman of the local mango farmers group. So, as we shape up his shamba, we also want Patrick to give us some tips on processing mangoes. Sounds interesting. Sounds interesting. Let's go and meet him. Oh, hello, hey. Mr. Tony what? and Carol. Oh. How are you? Patrick, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. That's ah, very yeah, good. Yes. Show us your shamba. Oh, you're welcome. All Come right, and thank you. you. You go thank to the shamba. You. Okay. Patrick has 500 fruit trees, including these mangoes. And these oranges are a real favorite of mine. He also grows tree tomatoes, and that's my favorite. Tony and uh, Carol. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, have a you. seat. Yeah. Let me ask you, as a chairman of a um, mango growing group, yeah, I'm sure you know quite a lot about fruits. Definitely, yes. So I want to ask you, are tomatoes a fruit or a vegetable? Tomatoes are fruits. I told you so. Okay, now that we have that confirmed, um, Mr. Patrick, yeah. I know as a farmer you have challenges here and there. Of course, there are many challenges, especially in the origins. There are some pests which always disturb us. Also, uh, the mango is doing very well here. And uh, transporting from the farm to the market, it is a very big challenge. If we can get a, a vehicle to transport the same, it is a very good one. Also, the third one, my wife is now getting old. We also, you can see, I'm old. And uh, if we can be assisted with uh, uh, the gas to cook, I think it will be a very useful to us. Oh, <laughs> I love that part, Tony. That's you see the way he, he, he's, he's looking out for his wife? Very nice. Mm, very loving. Very nice. I love that. Good, good. Well, Shamba Shepa uh, is here yeah. and you've come with our experts. We'll work with you. <laughs> so with your permission, kindly allow us to pitch our tent and yeah. get to work. Oh, thank you. We'll see you yeah. Okay, much. thank you. you. All right. Yeah, All bye. Right, bye. So, let's pitch the tent and get ready for work. Well, 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 here you are, Tony. Are you ready for a hard day's work? Of course I am, Carol. We have an expert coming to help with pests and diseases in oranges. And we find out about an amazing new home biogas system. But first, I'm off to see the mangoes. It's mango harvest time. And here's Charles, our expert from TechnoServe discussing harvesting techniques with Patrick. To avoid damaging mangoes, Patrick and Charles each have a special tool for harvesting. Let's find out how they work. I use this uh, kind of uh, uh, material to harvest the, the mangoes because it prevents the mangoes. This yeah, mm -hmm. this one. Mm -hmm. It is very good, it's very useful to, to prevent the mangoes dropping and get cracks. So Patrick, how do you do it? I pick my container and I go up to the, the fruits. Uh -huh. After hanging it, uh -huh. I pull slowly. 
Ah. You see, it does not fall down. Then it's easy just to reach yes. in. Yes. Take out your mango. Yeah. And put it in a container. In the container. Wonderful. Yeah. The hoop Patrick uses has a metal bar to pull the mango off the tree and a net underneath so the mango only falls a short distance. Hey, Charles. Yes. Why do you recommend farmers to use this kind of a system? There are fruits that are quite far off the tree and sometimes, it's, you know, farmers sometimes they just check the tree to have the fruits fall and when they fall, they, they, they tend to crack and even if they don't crack, you usually find that that part that has hit the ground, it starts getting spoiled. Is there another method that Patrick can use to harvest his mangoes? We have this technology that we have uh, brought. Um, this one is... Um, it's an import. It looks interesting, doesn't it? it is. Yeah. Yeah. So how does it work? So it is basically like what, uh, just getting to where the fruit is and the fruit falls down there. Tell, me, tell us, what's the difference between this particular tool yes. and the other one the farmer was using? That one has a bread and it's also able to carry a lot of, a lot of fruit that it has a net. This one is smaller and so the, the people who, who, who don't have a lot of energy. Sometimes this one becomes a problem because you have so many, heavy. it becomes heavy for them to, 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 uh, to, uh, to, uh, to harvest. But this one is two, he puts down, three, he puts down. The tool Charles is using has metal hooks to pull the mangoes from the tree and a metal basket with a paper card so the mango doesn't fall at all. It simply rolls into the cage. Last two great techniques for harvesting mangoes. It's vital mangoes are sent to the market in the best condition. If there's any bruising, the mangoes will be rejected and all your hard work will be for nothing. But what do farmers do at harvest time when there are too many mangoes flooding the market? Patrick has found a solution, a mango factory, where he not only sells his mangoes, but where he gets a higher price too. Can't wait to see the yeah. factory. Will you take yeah. us there right now? We see it? Of course, yes. Let's go. Yeah, Let, us go. Let us go see. Okay. All right. Charles, come on. The mango factory Charles sells his mangoes to is run on equipment supplied by Village Industrial Power, called the VIP Drying Solution. The dryer can process up to 600 kilos of dried mangoes in two shifts of a single 24-hour period. I can't wait to find out about it. Aha! And here's our experts from VIP, Farida and Benson. This is the heart of the process, the VIP biomass burner. It runs on farm waste, such as maize cobs, nutshells, and mango trimmings. The machine not only produces hot air to dry the mangoes, it produces electricity too. So let's go sit down and find out all about it. So what is the importance of drying? Actually, drying is important in that during when the fruits are on season, let's talk about the mangoes. There's a lot of wastage and the price in the market is not that good for the farmer. So drying is important because you can preserve it. So it cuts down on the post-harvest losses. And even when the fruit is out of season, you can still access it. So that is why drying is very important. You can preserve the produce and at the same time you can make it available off season. Mm. Yes. And I saw that, I think, two systems of drying. I saw there was a solar mm -hmm. and then using uh, the VIP. Yes. Why, what was the difference? But the challenge they had with solar drying was that because of the weather variability, when there is the cloudy cover that morning, there will be no drying. I don't know whether you saw the, 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 the slices that had yeah. some browning on them. Yeah. That means the heat was not enough. The, the fruits were going into waste. But when you look at the VIP drying, it is very reliable in that you, you don't have to worry whether it will be a rainy day or a sunny day. You can always use it at any time of the day, at any time of the season. So Benson, yes. what can you add to that? Once the mango season is over, macadamia is coming in. And uh, we have a plant which is a sweet potato, which is uh, all around the year. We have bananas which are all around the year. And all these products can be dried across the year. So there is no time the VIP machine will be idle. Wow. Well, you can use it for pasteurization of the juice or milk for the production of yogurt. You can as well use the VIP unit for irrigation, water pumping, because it can power that from the electricity it produces. So listening to what Farida has said and what I have added, VIP is a business in a box. Business in a box. 
Well, that's a fantastic system. A business in a box. I like that. Now, we think it's time we helped Patrick. So I want to see how getting a farm truck can help him with his mango business. Let's see what Patrick has to say. How do you bring your mangoes here? You either look for a motor vehicle or a bicycle or use your own bags to carry. Oh, you come eating some of them as you're carrying them. <laughs> now, there's an expert waiting for us to talk yeah. to you about how we can easily transport your mangoes, especially through your farmer's group, to bring them here. You want to go meet him? Yeah, yes, let's go. Let's go, he's waiting yeah. for us. Yeah. Okay, guys, thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. All right, all right. Wow, and this is the farm vehicle we think will help Patrick so much. The Mitsubishi FH215 from Simba Corp. Kevin! Tony! Hey, how are you doing? Very well. Good to see you. <laughs> good to see you too. Good, good. Jumbo, okay. jumbo. He's a farmer, hey, Mr. Hey. Patrick. Patrick. Yeah. Patrick. Yeah, He's Kevin. our expert, Kevin. Okay. Nice to meet you here. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. We were just discussing with uh, Patrick about how to transport his mangoes. All right. Do you think that this track here, which looks Beautiful, you know, it's <laughs> awesome. Do you think it can be enough for him and his farmers group? This is the best truck. It yeah. is. Patrick. Yeah. Uh, and what is it? What is it exactly? This is a Mitsubishi FH215, a 10-ton okay. truck uh, sold by Simba Colt Motors and uh, Simba okay. Corporation Limited. Okay. Let's have a look. Yeah. Where do we start from? We can start right from here. Yes. Yeah. Uh, any truck, uh, Mitsubishi FH, comes with any type of body you prefer. Yeah. In this particular one is an enclosed body. Mm -hmm. This is a side door. Yeah. So we can open it here so that you can have a look at it. Yes. Uh, wow. You can uh, stock your products here comfortably. You can load and offload from here. And it looks very secure. Yes, very, very secure. Uh -huh. um, it has a facility for a padlock uh -huh. for safety. So you just close it like this. Uh -huh. yeah. There's, of course, a step for you oh, when you to, to climb up and down. Uh, this is called the fuel tank. Uh -huh. It has a capacity of 200 liters. You can okay. go for very long distances without refueling. Yeah. So you save on time. Yeah. You can see here, this is a leaf spring suspension, yeah. which is very solid and tough for heavy loads. Yeah. Uh, this truck can carry, or we we'll recommend that it carries up to seven tons. Seven tons. Seven tons, yeah. Hi. At the back here, uh -huh. we have two doors. Maybe, Tony, you could help me open this other door. Like that? Yes. Okay. Let me also look inside and see. Oh, yes. there's a very good space. Very good space this for you. Spacious. Very spacious. Yeah, you can uh, sell yeah. your products from here. I ah, right. can't wait to see what's here. Yes. Uh -huh. So on this side, yeah. you can see you have a very uh, long chassis, about 20.5 feet. Mm -hmm. And the size of the tires is about 17.5. It will be able to support the load yeah. comfortably. So what makes it different from the rest? Uh, it is a tough reliable uh -huh. a truck with a very good resale value and i want to know how can we buy it as a group i'm the chairman of Kabiti's mango farmers and uh, this one can uh, assist us it's very very possible to own one of these trucks uh, as an individual and also uh -huh. as you've mentioned as a group owning a truck might be easier than you think patrick has over 50 members in his farmers group and if they buy together they spread the cost after paying the initial deposit, typical repayments for a truck like FH215 are 98,000 shillings per month over six years. But through a farmer's group with 50 members like Patrick's, each farmer only has to contribute 108,000 Kenyan shillings and they can own the truck without having to finance it. And then they can each share in the benefits. Not only that, when the truck is not needed by the group, they can rent it out, bringing in even more money. So you are happy with the truck? Yeah, of course I'm very happy. You'll be communicating yeah, yeah. with Kevin here to yes. see how he can help you. Yeah. And Kevin, I'm sure you're going to help our farmer here to yeah. see how you can help each other yes. for them to acquire yes. the Mitsubishi FH. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, so... Tony, yes. how's your day been going? Ah, it's very busy. We've been learning about drying mangoes and how to transport them. And there's still lots of work to be done. Yes. Coming
coming up after the break. Improving oranges and biogas. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are in Kambiti and we are visiting Patrick Kiveka. We have seen about harvesting and drying mangoes. But we also want to find out about looking after oranges. And a new biogas system for the home. So no time to waste. Let's get back to work. Let's get to work. Our next experts are Francis and Edwin from Osho Chemicals. Patrick has been growing oranges, which is not an easy crop to grow, but there's a market for good produce. So, we've invited our experts to see if they can help. And already, they found a problem. The oranges are affected by aphids, mealybugs, and powdery mildew. So, Edwin is going to demonstrate how best to spray fruit trees. But first, Francis is going to show us the problem. So is that possible to see now, maybe the tree behind you? Yeah, it's very, very possible. Mm -hmm. Because light away from behind, you can see the coloration of the plant. This plant, if the, if the plant is okay, the plant should be, should be green, green in color. This leaf is not green. It looks blackish, blackish. Yeah, it's to look black. This is what we call the sooty molds. After the attack of aphids combined, combined with the mealybugs. If you look on the underside of the leaves, you can see the whitish mold. Now, the whitish mold is what we call the powdery mildew. This is a disease which is a very important disease in, in oranges. And on the other side, you can see we have aphids, we have mealybugs, and we, ha we, have, uh, we have ants. Uh, Mr. Francis, yeah. you have shown all these problems. Yeah. And my question is, how can I solve this problem? In our company, that's the Osho Chemicals Industries Limited, yeah, yeah. we have this product by the name Nibesidin, which is a neem-based product, and one of the best products that you can use to control the mealybugs, to control yeah. aphids. So, Francis, yeah. any other uh, product that he can use? We have this product by the name Betaphos. Betaphos is a synthetic insecticide. So the chemical is very, very important. It's very strong and very superior. So you can mix them together? Yeah. You will eradicate all, all, all aphids, oh. you will eradicate all mealybugs, and you eradicate all ants. Why should I be good to use both at the same time? If you use one, one product, to some extent, you use it for a long time. It, uh, the pest may build resistance, and they won't be able. You will not be able to eradicate them. Mm -hmm. But when you combine, yeah. you ensure that you have controlled everything, yeah. and there is no resistance of the pest. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You told us also about diseases. Yeah. Let's talk about that. When I was working in the farm, we were able to get some instances, some diseases, and this is exactly what happens. Uh, for last year, we have we have one disease which we call the powdery mildew. Okay. Yeah, this is that what we call the powdery mildew. The leaf, the other side of the leaf is, is whitish, mm -hmm. and it's half what is a half a powder on top of it. Yeah, yeah which looks as if is a, is an ash. That's what we call powdery mildew. Then on the other side, we were able to get another infection of the disease which we call the leaf spot. Mm -hmm. The leaf turns a bit a bit yellowish. Then after that, gradually the leaf dries and then falls down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But now, you should not be worried because Osho Chemicals, we have a product that we can use to, to, to control the leaf spot and what we call now the powdery mildew. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Osho to the rescue. Yeah. 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 Now, Mr. Patrick, we have this yeah. product by the name Krasik. Uh, so, Edwin? Yes. It's now your time. And before we begin, I can see a lot of orange here. I can see gloves, I can see goggles. Tell us, why is it important to have this? Okay, these are called uh, PPEs, personal protective clothing. Mm -hmm. These are basically to protect your body from the, you see the chemicals are harmful, mm -hmm. yeah. so you need to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. That's why you have the gloves for the hands. Mm -hmm. We have the, the trouser, which is waterproof. Mm -hmm. And we have the gum boots. Mm -hmm. okay. We also have the goggles. These are for the highs. Yeah. Then we have the respirator yeah. for the for the nose and the, the, the mouth. Oh, right. yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So put, put, put them on. Let's yeah. let's see and let's do this. As Edwin starts to put on the protective clothing, we mixed the Osho chemicals ready for spray. To control pests in oranges, Osho recommends mixing 100 milliliters of nimbacidin with 20 milliliters of betaphors in 20 liters of water. To control diseases, OSHA recommends using Classic again, mixing 20 milliliters in 20 liters of water. Good! Now I see Edwin has his peepees on. Let's find out the three main rules for spraying. Now, when we are doing the spraying, we ensure one, we have to spray 
very early in the morning uh -huh. or eat in the afternoon oh. because of the of the of the sun. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's one. Two when you are spraying according to the direction of the weed. We oh. doesn't spray against the direction of the weed. Yeah. Three when you are doing the spraying, we should ensure that there is what you call the thorough coverage. Yeah. Ensure we cover all leaves, all branches, and the stem, so that to ensure that we have. Uh, proper and proper coverage and proper control mm -hmm. and uh, you have to ensure that you have a good pump yeah like the one you can see uh, you can see there so how much of the product do we need to spray per tree for example the small trees which are yes. between between one and two years yeah. the forage is not big the 20 liters pump is is in a position to cover a whole half an acre when we have now the big trees yeah. the 20 liters pack can only go approximately up to 50 plants. Yeah. Thank you very much, Francis. Oh, thank you too. Well, Lynn? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Francis. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you for yeah. your coming. Yeah. yeah. Time for our final expert. Patrick feels he's spending too much money on bottled gas. And refills are very heavy for Patrick and his wife to carry. So, we asked if we could visit the kitchen of a farm nearby where they are using a biogas system that can run on just kitchen waste. Home Biogas yes. from Amiran. Fine, thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. These are yeah. Farmer Patrick. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hello, Grace. Hello. How are Patrick, you? Patrick, you're fine, thank you. So what are you cooking, Grace? I'm cooking tea. A cup of tea would come in handy. Would you of mind a cup course. of tea? Long journey. Yeah. What are you cooking with? I am cooking with a Milan's mm -hmm. home biogas. Oh, how is the experience of cooking with it? It's very good. Mm. I use uh, chicken manure. Very and interesting. And also I use some things from the shamba. Hey, yeah. now, now I, I don't see the cylinder or anything. Where, where are you getting the gas from? Just outside the kitchen, just here. Uh -huh. Yeah, you see somebody called Joel. Joel. Joram, Joram, I'm sure he's waiting for us. He there. is waiting for us. Good. Yeah. Thank you. All Joram. right, Patrick, let's go meet Joram. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. Well, Grace seems very happy with our biogas. Now, I wonder what the system is going to look like. Wow, this looks amazing. And here's Joram, an expert on home biogas from Amiran, to explain it all to us. Now, you, you tell me, what exactly is home biogas? It's a product from home biogas company. We are supplying it as Amiran Kenya. How, how different is it from other biogas? Well, the thing about it is very simple to install. And it is supplying enough energy to supply gas to cook for it members of a family. How does it work exactly? What does it use? Explain to us. It's a very simple procedure. Every morning, the farmer is going to put waste from the kitchen. It can be uh, the animal droppings, maybe it's chicken or is the whatever animal he is using. And then he put in the sink. Then together with water is mixed at the ratio of one to one, comes into the digester, which is down here. And it is going to produce gas by itself, and the gas is stored in this chamber. Mm. So you will realize that a farmer will be able to see the gas pumping up. Slowly, oh. slowly, it's continuous. Mm -hmm. So they can be able to get gas for your use for the kitchen, and they can be able to get fertilizer, which is a form of bio slurry, that they can mix with water and take to their fields, and they can get very nice vegetables, very nutritious, because this is rich in nutrients, Wow, easy to use, easy to install, uses waste, and also creates byproducts of fertilizer. This is amazing. I tell now, you. Patrick, yes, what do you think of home biogas now? Please, can I afford to buy this? We are selling it at Amiran at a very affordable amount that anybody can afford. For looking at the material, how long can it last? It is meant to last for over 10 years. What about if, if we go on a safari and leave it for uh, three to four days without using it? What happens if the gas is full? Yeah. It is designed in a way that it can be able to release the extra gas. Oh. So, so you don't have to worry, you can go for holiday okay. and when you come back, you cook. Every homestead should have it and they will be able to enjoy the benefits of having their wastes converted into energy or waste converted into money. Wow. I'm sure Patrick might want to order this. Will it come looking like this? Uh -huh. It's not exactly like this. Yeah. 
believe it or not, is in a small box oh, oh. that you can be able to carry it yourself. Oh, Have yeah. a look. I can show you how it oh. is working. The home biogas unit comes in a simple cardboard box. Assembled in just two hours, no expertise is necessary. And once the waste is added, the first gas we produced in just two weeks. What do you think about it, guys? Well, quite easy and simple. Yeah. Wow. Tony! Okay. Yeah. Hey, Adam oh. here. Wow. Ah, I could ah. not miss this for the world. Uh -huh. Ah, there was a biogas demonstration. I couldn't miss it. Plus the tea. Cup of tea. Welcome, welcome everybody. Here you are, there you yes. go. Okay. Welcome for there the tea. Go. Thank you. Oh, thank Mama, you. thank you for the tea. Thank you so yes. much. Thank you so much for tea, Grace. Yes. Made from biogas. Bio bio Let me take a sip. <laughs> Tony. Ah, oh, biogas very tea. Nice. Very, very nice, nice. very so, nice. Patrick. Biogas. How was the demonstration? Thank you, thank you. It is very nice, mm -hmm. very attractive. Mm -hmm. Really? Yes. Did you All enjoy right. the shape? And I enjoyed it with the, the shape up, mm -hmm. and I think I have made very many friends. Aha! Uh -huh. the shape mm. up. And you That's think nice. you are shaped yeah. up? Yeah. yeah. Mm, that is good. <laughs> okay. Wow. Joram, what do you think of our farmer? Patrick should be our next client. I'm sure he's convinced that this is the best product he that can ever have. That is very have. true. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I can see everybody's happy, yes. holding their cups of oh, tea, yes. and we're also very, very happy as Shamba yes. Shepa. Yes. And we'll see you next time, right here on Shamba, Shamba Shepa. Shepa.